Number 33, use the standard free energy of formation data in Appendix G to determine the free energy change for each of the following reactions, which are run under standard state conditions and are at 25 degrees Celsius. Identify each as either spontaneous or non-spontaneous at these conditions. Okie dokie. So we have a balanced equation, copper solid, CUS, plus S gas yields CUS solid. Now, we're trying to find a free energy change, right? Any change value is a delta. That's that little triangle, final minus initial. And free energy is always referring to Gibbs free energy. So that is delta G. So we're trying to search for a delta G value here. Now, since they didn't give us technically any numbers, we had to go in the back of that textbook. In this case, the textbook value is Appendix G. Could be different for your textbook. But I had to go in the back to find out what the individual standard free energy values were. Now, since we're under standard conditions, standard state conditions, that means that we can use the standard values in the back of the book, but we're also finding a delta G notch. Anytime that you see that notch value, that just means that you're at standard state. So I went in the back of the textbook and I found out each individual delta G value. So for copper sulfide, since it's not copper sulfide, just copper sulfur, what am I talking about? <laughs> copper solid. Since this is just a copper in a solid state, it's zero, no kilojoules per mole. Sulfur gas is 238.25 uh, and for CUS gas or CUS solid, it's negative 53.6. Now, what am I going to do with those values to get the standard, you know, free energy change? Well, the formula is this right here. Anytime that we're trying to solve for a delta G for a whole entire reaction, Rxn is reaction, you're looking for the sum. That's this little symbol here. So we're trying to find the sum. That's just addition. So we're going to sum up all the products, delta G products, minus the sum of all of the delta G reactants. So in essence, it's just products minus reactants. But are these numbers going to stay the same or are they gonna be different? Well, it goes by the balanced equation and the coefficients in the front. In this case, I have nothing in front of the copper, nothing in front of the sulfur, and nothing in front of the CUS. That means that I have one of each. So technically, for each value, you should be multiplying by that number. So I'm just going to show it to you, right? This would be 1 times 0. This would be 238.25 times 1. And this would be negative 53.6 times 1. So now you know what to do if you have like a 2, you know, in front of the compound. You just take that number and times it by 2. Now we just have to sum it up. Right? Literally, on the reactant side, it's copper plus sulfur. So it's this number plus this number. We know what this number is, right? Zero plus anything is that number. So we get an ending of 238.25. And then for the CUS, the product side, one times negative 53.6, well, that's negative 53.6. Now I'm ready to plug in these values into my question, right? Delta G for the whole entire reaction equals the sum of all the products. Well, it was just one product, negative 53.6. And I'm just going to subtract that by the 238.25. Okay, so now here comes Calci time. Delta G, the change of the free energy in the whole reaction is... Calculator time, negative 53.6, whoop, not 53.3, 53.6, minus 238.25. Enter. And now you do get an answer of negative 291.85, but according to sig figs, since this value only has it to the tenths place, and this has it to the hundredths place, we could only round to the tenths place, the lower amount. So in this case, I would have to take that 85 and turn it into a 9. The 5 rounds the 8 up to a 9. The unit here would be just kilojoules. 
because these values, these coefficients that you're multiplying by, are mole values. So if you have kilojoule over mole and you're timesing by a mole, those mole values go bye bye, and you're just left with kilojoules. So this is the delta G value. This is the free energy change. Now from here, we just got to find out, is it spontaneous or not spontaneous? Well, this is the information that you got to memorize. Anytime that you have a delta G value that's less than zero, aka if it's a negative value, that reaction is spontaneous. No additional energy from any outside source is needed to make this reaction run. But if you have a delta G that's greater than zero, aka a positive number, it's not spontaneous, which means that you do need that extra you know, external source of energy. Here I have a negative value, so it's spontaneous. No extra oomph is needed. There you go, spontaneous. And maybe I will put that in the middle. Let's make it nice and pretty and be done with it. There you go. Really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel. Tell your friends, tell your classmates. Would really love to help all you guys out in chem. We also have physics and math videos on the channel at the moment. We may have more depending on when you're watching this video. So go check the channel out. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.